Welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today we are going back to the planet Urk by way of a very strange version of Earth with two incredibly talented performers from the cast of Invader Zim. So now is the time for all of you in our chat room to begin typing in your questions for them. Immediately after the session, you will have the opportunity to talk to them directly through our private chat options, as well as shop our selection of personalized autograph photos, all of which are available right now at galaxycon.com. So without further ado, let's bring them out. Our first guest, he is a voice actor, writer, and artist whose body of work includes Mighty Magic Swords, Trinkets, The Sad Circus by the Sea, and Tabacat. Today he joins us as the voice of Gurr. Please welcome Ricky Simons. <laughs> How you doing, boss? I'm good. How are you? Oh, we are holding up very well. Uh, how are things in your corner of the world? Okay, I'm secluded in my uh, book bunker. So that's good. Obviously. Uh, indeed. Is that, uh, is that, so you got uh, Inspector Gadget. You got uh, Dr. Oh, Bunsen yeah. Honeydew, a character yeah. I voice actually for Disney. Uh, yeah. You got some other good geek trinkets there. Yeah, this is my little corner of the place. And um, oh, that's, the where, that's the were rabbit from Wallace and Gromit? Were rabbit down there. Uh, <laughs> there's some Smurfs and some Moomins up there. And there's, uh, if I can see the, I got the, uh, Marvin from the movie uh, Hitchhiker's Guide and all my favorite things. Are awesome. Got some D&D &D books. Uh, uh, got some robots. You know, all the good stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's good to see you again, my friend. And let's bring our next actor. He is an actor whose body of work includes the Muddy Morphin Power Rangers, the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, and can recently be seen on the web series, Some Kind of Joke. Today, he joins us as the voice of Zim himself. Please welcome Richard Horvitz. Yeah. Wake up! <sighs> How long have I been out? Year. Oh, oh, it's 2022, about, and don't ask me how, things got worse. I guess about four months I've been out. I've been yeah. hibernating. This is just the first decade of the pandemic. <laughs> the first decade. Later that same century. <laughs> oh, me, oh, my. Uh, well, gentlemen, it is a pleasure to have you here on the Galaxy Cut virtual stage. Uh, as always, we look forward uh, to having you back on our live stages and in front of your fans. And in the meantime, we've got you here in this format. And again, thank you all for being here. And thank you for being a part of this series, uh, winning an yeah. Emmy, uh, Emmy Award, Annie Award, World Animation Celebration Awards, and tons of other things for something that basically lasted, what, maybe a season, a season and a half? About 27 episodes, you count yeah. the, uh, the episodes and a movie. And the movie. We'll get to that in a moment. Don't get ahead. All right. <laughs> what I'd love to hear is, uh, while our producing team is uh, pulling questions to the audience, I would love to hear uh, from you guys, because I know just getting on the show is very interesting and unusual for both of you. Uh, I'd love to hear how, where did, uh, where did Zim begin for you? And Ricky, let's start with you. <laughs> oh, uh, mm. well... Uh, there's a thing, and this guy showed up and went, Oh, I want to be on my show. I'm like, Okay, yeah, and then I was on it. Uh, but I was a short version. <laughs> <laughs> I met Jordan Vasquez in the 90s at a convention, uh, 1995. I was working on comics at the same time, I was doing some background acting in movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, he was just starting to do his comic career, and uh, he and then he you know, we made friends and then he started calling me all the time and he wouldn't stop calling. <laughs> uh, around uh, 97, he asked me if I would color a cartoon show that he was pitching to Nickelodeon mm -hmm. about an alien. I said, sure, I like money. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, I've never colored a cartoon show before, but it sounds great. Um, and then- Is in, it hard when it's going so fast to I try know, to you, you have to everybody. <laughs> you go, well, this does raise a point. Was this really, this was uh, kind of before te computer technology really took firm hold? Was this handheld coloring or were you doing it on, on machine? We, uh, uh, Nickel um, Invader Zim was the first digital painted show uh, at Nickelodeon. Okay. We, oh, had, wow. okay. we had to go out and buy computers for our department. And uh, when they, when they, when we first got there, they, they gave the entire department one computer and it was from SpongeBob and it actually had paint on the monitor. So I'm not sure what they were doing. Uh, computer to paint this, but it's not one computer for five people. That doesn't work. 
so it, it took a, it was a learning process. Um, but after we that, I had, a um, we had huh? a 3D department in the beginning. We had a what? The 3D department. We had a 3D department too. Yes, we had the first 3D <clears throat> department. Uh, oh wow. Uh, before Billy Neutron or any of that stuff, uh, we had <laughs> Billy Neutron. Yeah, Billy Neutron. <laughs> Jimmy Neutron. Billy was in back addicted. <laughs> brother. Brother. Yeah, that was another <laughs> series. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Billy was the brother that didn't uh, Billy, Billy, Neutron, Billy parents. <laughs> one was brilliant. He can create neutrons. The other one just sold meth. Uh, I have a lot of respect <laughs> for the industry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're so you're 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 working away at this uh doing the colors in the background uh off of this already painted uh computer uh and and I, I know that he had been trying to cast Gurr and in his own words, I believe he said something to the fact that everybody sounded too professional or too good well, at it. Before before uh I started coloring on the show, I was coloring uh, I was living at Jonan's house and coloring a book he was working on called I Feel Sick. Uh, and he was having trouble finding voice actors. This is 98. He was having trouble finding voice actors to fit the, the role of Gurr for the pilot because he's, as he explained to me, they were all too professional sounding, uh, and he wanted someone who sounded crappy. Um, <laughs> and I said, I said, well, I, do you want me to audition for it? He says, yeah, I guess you couldn't screw it up any more than anyone else. And then I got the audition. <laughs> so. Did Jonah know you were living at his house at the time? No. That was no, a surprise. No. Yeah, oh, wow. one day. I'm like, oh, okay, oh, close the doors cold. <laughs> and Bloody was born. Yes. <laughs> Look at Bloody. <laughs> uh, uh, the first time, Jonan just said, do the worst thing you possibly can. And that's, I just, <laughs> and I looked up and he was laughing so hard. I knew that I made him happy. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Richard, uh, you came on board, and this was uh, uh, you were the you were the third one to actually do. I think that they did two pilots, or they re well, did the pilot. Well, uh, this is one of the stories I always have to I always have to get correct because it's and Ricky knows I this is like a pet peeve of mine. I was really the first choice. Okay, all for, right for uh, for Jonan, uh, and even Jonan, I will quote Jonan to tell the story. This is actually in the the. Um, What's it in, Ricky? The art, the Dim, Dim art of book, which just yes. came out. All right, Dim, all right. Dim, Dim art of book, and this is I actually in it. And some this, of my art. Yeah, Ricky's got Ricky's got stuff in there. They interviewed me. They yeah. inter me to interview Richard. They did not interview me because I, I am by far, I am far and away <laughs> not. Yeah, he was not on like, any <laughs> sort. Richard, well, how could we possibly? <laughs> Um, and so, Patty, what happened was, um, uh, do, 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 let's see here, because I'll say it in Jonan's words. All right. Will you imitate him as well? No, I will not. Okay. <laughs> he writes, I remember Richard being the hardest one to get on the series because casting thought his audition was still too close to the character that he played on Angry Beavers, Daggett. I kept at it, and eventually I won out on that. Everyone else eventually realized, why are we fighting? This is great. I knew this was the guy. He's perfect. So that's generally what happened was Jonah had come to me and he really wanted me on the show, but the producers at Nick thought because I was still on Angry Beavers that it was too close to Daggett. So they went, uh, they, you know, they had a couple. They had Mark Hamill, then they had, you know, um, Billy West. Yeah. And so they'll often, you know, often I'll see things on the news or I'll see in print or something on the internet that says, Billy West is Invader Zim, and someone will always correct correct them, say, no, Richard Horvitz was Invader Zim, and they go, yeah, but Billy was first. But the fact of the matter is, is that that actual pilot, the one that everyone has now and they can air, will notice that mm -hmm. half the line is me and half the line is Billy. So I am all over mm -hmm. that pilot. Um, yeah, and Billy and I I begin with Billy saying something and then Richard laughing. Yeah. Wow. Or vice versa or, or something yeah. like that. But Eventually, the pilot was only used to, uh, when I dubbed over it, was to show New York that, look, Richard is who we want, and that was yeah. it. And after that, that's how I got on the show. And that's the yeah. Or you so secured your place, which had already been given. Secured my place. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So you uh, you guys you guys hit it, hit the ground running, uh, and as it is for usually innovative programming, uh, uh, people above could not see 
the value, let's just say. And so it went fallow, had a very, very strong uh, fandom, which I'm, I'm sure you guys noticed over the years. When, when did you realize, wow, I still keep getting Invader Zim fans coming up to my table? It's like, when did you realize that the, the fandom has sort of eclipsed its, uh, its initial run? Right when the pandemic started. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what pandemic? <laughs> what are you talking about? Ricky and I took to the road very early on uh, to conventions once the show was canceled. Ricky had been oh, doing Bob it. And Bing Crosby. Yeah. <laughs> I started doing conventions, I guess, probably around uh, Angry Beaver's time. So just mm-hmm. a few years before Zim was done. Uh, and, and it was Billy West, as a matter of fact, who got me to do my first uh, convention. Uh, but then Ricky and I were on the road. Sometimes we were on the road, you know, 16, 17, 18 shows a year. And we would we would fly across country on a, on a Thursday night and be on the East Coast, fly home Sunday night, and then be back on the East Coast by the yeah. next Thursday because we were going back and forth and all over the country mm-hmm. and the world. And it was, I guess, during that time we really – realized that there was a huge fandom. But the funny thing is, is I was talking to my uh, friend, Dean Cameron, who I do the, uh, some kind of joke with, who I did a movie mm-hmm. with called Summer School. Um, and it, and the funny thing is, is that I think it's me. Everything that I'm in is like a cult classic, which is code for not commercially successful. <laughs> but I mean, everything's called cult, cult following. You know? it's, it's, like, it's, cool. it's a cool status. Yeah, I'm with the cool kids. It's like the nerd who made it with the cool kids. It's <clears throat> behind the school. Yeah, I'm like the Ted Raimi of uh, voiceover. <laughs> well, I, in, in defense of Zim, um, as I understand it, the the merchandise kept selling. It may not have like like broken the rose, but it had it still had a steady flow and demand America for merch. And the world love Gur. And I'll never <laughs> forget this. At the first, when the first product came out at Hot Topic, it was everything. There was Gur. There was Zim. There was there was gas, there was dib, and slowly but surely, it came down to just Gur. There he is, <laughs> and you know, Gur hoodies, Gur backpacks, Gur, Gur, Gur. And I remember saying this to Jonan one day, and Jonan said, Every show needs a plushie, and ours is Gur. <laughs> oh, how adorable. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, over the years, I'm sure you, you were constantly asked, like, so is it coming back? When's it coming back? Is it coming back? So no, when did you I'm right there? Every time he comes up, he says that. <laughs> yeah. When, uh, me again. When, when when did you begin to hear like some official rumblings of possibly Zim coming back? When did you get a formal uh, 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 formal offer? And how long did you have to keep quiet about it? May like the movie? Yeah, the movie. Yeah. I well, kept it quiet from Richard for a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Funny thing, really? Is, yeah. See, they were disappointed because they were still negotiating, and Jonan let me know that they were negotiating, and he's like, well, "Don't tell Richard yet because it's it'll make him sad if it doesn't work out." And and so I'd be talking to Richard, be like, "Oh, I hope, uh, it'd be nice if we did something else." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, "Here's the thing, Jonan. Jonan every now and then will call me up, and he'll always be on like some cross country drive where he's gotten an idea." For the for a Zim uh, for a Zim uh, reboot or something, else. and then sure. and then we get these puppets, and it's like and, and this is when I get excited because when Jonan's excited about something, then I start to get hope. But then I don't hear anything for years. But this last time when he started to tell me the story of Florpus on the phone as he was driving, I said, "Well, he seems pretty excited about it." And then I just kept I kept hounding Ricky. You haven't heard anything, have you? Ricky's like, "No, no." And finally, Ricky told me after I beat him. <laughs> I think I called you while I was in a hotel room and you were at home and I, just because I felt so guilty finally. <laughs> yes. It's like you're cheating on me. <laughs> Look, go get your hopes up. But this is <laughs> I'll get your hopes up, son. Well, fill your heart with despair. <laughs> Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> well, it must have been a relief to finally, finally, finally say something. Yes, we're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. All right. <laughs> well, the 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 general uh, reaction to our early trailers of that said, you know, coming soonish was that it was not true. None of the fans believed it. They thought it was a, just another hoax, another thing that Jonah was putting out, and nobody would believe that we were really doing it. Remember that, Ricky? Oh, this is Jonah. <laughs> Jonan's teased them so often over the years. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. 
you know, guess what? Your favorite gum is coming back, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, nevertheless, we're glad it's back. Uh, look forward to uh, possibly uh, another chapter of the future, but uh, yeah, well, I still, should... still streaming on Netflix. Enter the floor. Yeah. Invaders, yep. enter the floor. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Our producer, let me know that we are good to go on questions for our audience. So I'll ask Jude, our amazing producer to roll our first one. And this time, so Kyla. What do you think of the sh what what do you think of the show when you first heard of Invader Zim? I thought I'm on it. Hmm. <laughs> Wait, what's the question I, again? I, I think what she's asking though know, is I think when, when you were first approached and maybe you heard the title, it's called Invader Zim. And what was your what was your gut reaction maybe to the initial pitch as you guys were you guys understood it? Well, for me, like I, I was already working at Nickelodeon on the Beavers, and I just saw this group of goth move into the into the studio, and they were like taking over, like they're in dark clothes and moody, and you know, all of a sudden they're putting up purple gels over the fluorescent lights. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> I'm a pastel goth now. You're now pastel goth, and most of our our designs are pastel and color on our show now. Are, are pastel. Doing, yeah. And so I was excited to be a part of it. Uh, but I judged everyone harshly to begin with. Uh, I, I first, uh, like, uh, Jonan called me in 97 and said he was pitching this show, uh, standard alien invasion type thing, but it was going to be funny. He said it was going to be like Monty Python with giant robots. I was like, that sounds good. Uh, so, uh, and then later on, I think it was about, it was in 98, uh, he had an office at Nickelodeon and he brought me in to go look at stuff that they were working on. And he had the designs up on a wall and uh, the one that I liked was Gurr in his dog suit. I'm like, oh, who's this guy? Um, so I thought that was cute. Uh, this weird booby-eyed little green thing. What I? <laughs> huh? What I? Oh, what booby eyes. Booby He's got eyes. Booby eyes. Um, <laughs> when he wears his dog suit. <laughs> when I was first brought into audition, I thought that I was reading for Dib because I thought that was more my kind of character. Mm. Uh, I didn't even think that. I didn't even realize that Jonah was. Wanted me to what what your dib, your dib, uh, your dib audition like? Been like this. Not this time, Zim. Nye, 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 nye. <laughs> <laughs> I would have signed off on that. <laughs> uh, Kayla, thank you. That was a great one to start us off with. And here's one from Kathy. <clears throat> Is there a Nickelodeon show uh, you would like Invader Zim to do a crossover with? Hmm. And I'll I'll I'll, 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 I'll probably say that I'd like to do an Avatar Invader Zim crossover. That's my I think that'd be fun. Ninja Turtles. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I think Ninja Turtles would fit. Yeah. Uh, a little easier. I don't want it to fit that easy. I want to directed a Ninja Turtles short. Yeah. Uh, so he could do it in that style. True. True. All right. Okay. Kathy, thank you. That's yeah. I guess the Ninja Turtles going on that way. <clears throat> And from Basilio, have you ever pulled inspiration from someone you knew or a prolific figure when developing a voice? Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, in Angry Beavers, uh, uh, Daggett starts out as Lou Costello. You listen to me, Norbert, we're beavers. But then I realized that that sound, that Lou Costello sounds like, um, like Time Daly from Cagney and Lacey. And before you knew it, he was sounding like, you listen to me, Christine, I am a New York cop. And then I realized, well, that really sounds like Nathan Lane. And then that sounded like, uh, that sounded like, hey, in that wild Bob Hope. Arr, I tell you, so Daggett was Bob Hope for a while. Hmm. And then uh, at one point I got hooked on the movie Glen Gary, Glen Ross with uh, Jack Lemmon. And so it became, it, it, it put my name up there. It, it put my name, give me those leaves. And uh, so I was all different characters as Daggett. I remember one of the producers at one point turned to Mitch Shower, the creator, and said, is he ever going to do Daggett again? <laughs> <laughs> I drew my advice from my friend Richard Horvitz. Uh, <laughs> classes. Richard teaches voiceover classes. And one of the mm -hmm. things that you say is make sure you're doing a character and not just a voice. Right. Uh, I think that's the most important thing is that there's a difference between doing a voice and uh, creating a character that you yeah. live inside the skull of, and 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 then the voice comes from there. Um, yeah, because most people, like pointing out, they get their thing and they go, oh, they look at the picture and they go, what does this guy sound like? 
And then they don't do any of the story work, but it's the yeah. story work, what the words represent that create the character. The voice does the work of the spirit, which I call the spirit of play. And so we create characters, not voices. So if, in fact, if I were gonna set someone up on a blind date, that, that person would never say, well, what's their voice like? That's rarely a question that we ask. <laughs> we always ask, what are they like personality wise? <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. I, uh, in my own, uh, I, I have a triangle. I say like, I'll either pull inspiration from, uh, old radio shows, uh, old foreign films. Cause I'll wonder that's an interesting voice. What's it going to sound like my version in English? Mm -hmm. And if worst comes to worst, I can always start with Hans Conried. <laughs> <laughs> and you can play uh, captain hook. <laughs> I, I, I prefer slightly whiplash. Ah, uh, yes. I <laughs> but still, yo, thank you. That was a great one. And from Disney, what is your favorite episode for each of your characters and why? What do you think, Richard? Well, I think that for me, my I I like Dark Harvest. I know that people, a lot of people are freaked out. But my favorites are uh, Dark, Dark Harvest and I love um, Plague of Babies because I love that Zim is <laughs> only one that knows that those babies are aliens. <laughs> I am here to, I'm the baby inspector. I'm here to inspect your babies. <laughs> I got a play <laughs> babies. Yeah, love that. <clears throat> I like, I like Gurgo's crazy and stuff is one of my other favorite ones. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to, I just love, I think, I think when everyone, when anyone asks me that question, for me, it's that I'm a fan of the show. Like I don't always watch the shows that I voice, but even if I didn't voice Zim, I'd be a huge fan of the show because the writing and the artwork, it's just like so amazing. I'm so proud of that show. Ricky, what's your answer? Uh, all my favorite stuff's in the second season, but it's not, second season is not as Gur heavy. Uh, like I love Gaz Taser of Pork and I love, I love the Christmas episode so much. It's one right here. Yeah, that was fun. But, my favorite thing is the movie. The Enter the Florpus has my favorite Gur stuff in it of all time with the, I ate a baby there. <laughs> oh, you know, yes, he did. He did. It does, one of my favorite things in the Florpus is, it's like, of course, of course, Gur, their stupid eyeballs can't handle all this. <laughs> and Gur goes to one side screams and goes to the other side of Zim and screams. <laughs> it's just one of my favorite moments. And I also like uh, the moment where, where uh, where Zim just goes, why don't you get in your spaceship and fly? Well, that's right, you don't have one! <laughs> that's ridiculous. There's, a, there's a lot of, there's so much fun stuff in the movie. I, I love doing the, the the chicken and rice song yes. uh, written by Jonan and uh, and um, with uh, music by uh, Kevin Manthe. Uh, and I love, um, God, there's just so much in there that Gerd does. Uh, <laughs> uh, building the throne that fires peanuts and flames. <laughs> yes. In, uh, uh, flames, peanuts, peanuts, flames. <laughs> I'm going to order a million pizzas and I'm going to roll around in them pizzas. And that's the story of how I become a giant pizza. We're not doing the pizza, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I think he looks like he's animating like a little baby in a jumper in that one. He's just having a tantrum on the on the couch, and his little feet are kicking. <laughs> I think I, mean, I think most fans of the show know that my favorite line in exchange ever in the show is "Girl, why was there bacon in the sh in the in the soap?" Which is the Pastulio episode. Um, and the reason I like it is because Gur is so defiant at that moment. His <laughs> answer has nothing to do with the question asked. He's like, "I made it myself." <laughs> it's like, is he talking about the soap or is he talking about the bacon? Yeah, see. he did only hang out with a pig. Only you would know the answer to that question. He did hang out with a pig. And where is that oh, pig? Yeah, that is one of my favorite episodes. Ooh. Come on, pig, let's go to my room. <laughs> Far down in the basement. <laughs> Come on, pig, let's go to my room. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Desiree, thank you. That was good. That took us down a fun road. And here's one about Devin. <clears throat> Invader Sim is a highly quotable show, as we've certainly seen here. Uh, were there any famous quotes that stand out that maybe you uh, ad-libbed or weren't a part of your, uh, your original script? I think the most commonly heard story that I've told about that is in the beginning, in the pilot, um, the, the line as written was, 
uh, invaders blood, invaders blood marches through my veins like giant radioactive rubber ants. And I accidentally said giant radioactive rubber pants and Jonathan said, yeah, rubber pants. So that's, that's what ended up in that one. Was uh, there an episode that you did by accident in the movie that ended up getting cut? Yes. Yeah. It's like, so yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that was one of my favorites. I'm pretty proud yeah. of that one. It's like, he says, he says, it's when, it's when, when Zim is being chased by Dib over the, over the galaxy, through the planets. And he mm -hmm. says, Zim yells, you're ugly when you lie, Dib. And Dib I'm says, not I'm not and why are you ugly? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Ricky had a lot. Ricky had a lot in, in ADR. Uh, yeah. my, 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 I don't know if they're really ad libs. They're just sort of liberties that Jonan let me take on style. Um, like, like Jonan will very specifically have ideas that he wants for the characters to sound like this. And then I would screw it up. And then he would like the screw ups <laughs> a little more. And so then we would workshop the screw ups. Uh, and then sometimes I would just do something so bizarre since I had no training. Um, <laughs> uh, so like a, a case in point was like uh, the episode where he goes, why is his head so big? Uh, that was <laughs> but I did, I did three takes because you usually do three takes. And it was like, why is his head so big? Why is his head so big? And he liked all three takes and he just ran it together like <laughs> broken and doing the same thing over and over. <laughs> uh, awesome. Devin, thank you. That was a fun one. We have next from Crimson. If you met the characters from Invader Zim, which ones do you think you'd get along with the most and which ones you'd get along with the least? Oh, my. Hmm. I get along well with Gur. It'd be big like it, like I'd be in that world, so my head would be huge. Uh, yeah. I think I get along with her, and the least I probably would get along with is. Mm. Oh, I know, Count Coco Fang. <laughs> I would get along the least with Count Coco Fang. I was so afraid of Dracula's when I was. Right. <laughs> In the uh, the episode, um, uh, Fry Cook. Um, there's a there's an orange uh, alien called Eric the Blob. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He seemed nice. I'd probably get along with him pretty well. He just shows up and eats a lot of food at the restaurant that Zim is stuck at. So that's not bad. Probably it wouldn't get along me. very well. With for me. That monkey, that yeah. horrible monkey. I probably wouldn't get along very good with uh, with Mortos or Soul Stealer. He seems like a mooch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fair, absolutely fair. Crimson, thank you. What do we have next? From Tip Top. Why are there a lot of pigs on Invader Zim? <laughs> I think because pig is a fun word to say. Come on, pig. Let's go to my room. <laughs> Gunner, Jonan, don't throw the last pig. Love Zim. Jonan, Jonan's very uh, a lyrical person. Like, uh, like, like he runs off of sound bites. I think he just really likes the sound of the word pig. Uh, when you say it, so that's my theory. Because there's no pigs in the movie. Uh, he was like, "There's like, he's like we're done with pigs." So into the floor, no pigs. Hmm. Sorry, pig lover. Let's go to my room. He's on at that point to a donkey that Gur rides on. I've <laughs> <laughs> had its time. It's donkey time now. It's donkey time. <clears throat> donkey it's time. Mini, mini moose time. Yeah, mini moose get his day in the sun until Florpus. You know Jonan's story about Mini Moose, right? Well, he came yes, Mini Moose. He's been here the whole time. Mini Moose, uh, he said, was from mishearing uh, the soundtrack from The Omen. Uh, he, he said it sounded like they were singing Mini Moose. Mini Moose. Mini Moose. <laughs> Tip top, thank you. Oh, what's next? From Rarities Diamonds. <clears throat> do you guys have anything you do to get into character before recording? Well, punch in the throat. Okay. Each. Yeah. Each. One yeah. each. Mine's in the neck, his is in the throat. Yeah, well, because he's shorter than me. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 height, as we know, fits very much into this show's mythology. <laughs> um 
I think there's nothing we really do to get into the character. You know, it was a little bit different when we came back after not doing it, recording for 17 years. Um, that, you know, the laugh always takes me into Zim, that most of my characters have their own laugh. So, you know, Zim's is the obvious. <laughs> Whereas Billy's was always the, <laughs> and Daggett was always. <laughs> So I think that for me, I always I always want to know exactly how my characters laugh to help me hook into them. That works. What was the question again? I missed it. Do you have anything oh, to get into character before recording? Oh, um, hey, you know, I have some water. And, uh, you know, I try not to eat before I record. And you, acid, you, do that, you do that tab of acid. Yeah. You're just burping the whole time if you eat before you record, and you don't want that. No. <laughs> uh, Rarity Simons, thank you. Uh, what we have next from Megan. Do you guys think Zim genuinely cares for Gur or just does stuff for Gur to get him to stop talking? <laughs> I don't think I don't think Zim has the capacity to care for anyone but Zim. And Gur Gur is an interesting pet that sometimes does what he wants it to do. Uh, uh, but I don't know if it's like there's not a lot, a lot of like people, like people write like a lot of fanfics and stuff about love and Zim and, and caring characters. But we, ex I think the game, the the the, the, the game, the, the, the show uh, expressly expresses that um, there's no love in that show. Zim needs no love. He actually says it. Zim needs no love. <laughs> He's born in a test tube. We have an episode where you see that Urkins are born in test tubes. Oh, yeah, uh, but I do say love in that. I yeah. love you, Golden Feeling you Robot love, Arm. I do say love. love. Arm. The one thing you love in the world is a robot arm. He's a cold, unfeeling. So maybe there is some part of Zim that likes Gurr's arm. <laughs> it's, not, it's not cold and unfeeling. It's always feeling. Yeah. Like, like he wants to be mad at Gurr, but then he just looks at his arm and goes, oh, I do love uh, robot arms. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Megan, thank you. That was a good one. What do we have next? Uh, uh, I'll call you. I'll call you Tat. Um, my question to most of us: Would you like to see Zim as a musical with the characters singing? Yes. Is that Tatiana from Russia? I think that's Tatiana from Russia. That's yes, I definitely would. Um, because I think I've spoken about this many times. Even when we did uh, San Diego Comic Con for the movie, I talked about doing. Uh, Something like a Les Mis with, with Zim and Gurr and the rest of the cast. Would you like to see Zim? Uh, Richard's in the musicals. Uh, Richard really likes musicals. I like music, but not necessarily with pictures. <laughs> you can just sing songs in Zim. I like, I, like, okay, I like musicals when they're comedies. So this would be a comedy. Sure, that would be fun. Uh, well, it'd be fun because Melissa is a musical. Gaz is an oh, actual yeah, great. I have musical. a lot of respect for people who can sing on stage. Yeah. And oh. she was in the original cast of Wicked, so I'm sure she would love to do it as a musical. I don't think mm -hmm. Andy Berman, who played Dib, would care for it as a musical. <laughs> but he would do it because he's a good sport. He would, yeah, he would do it. He would do it. <laughs> All right, right on. Ted, thank you for that one. And what do we have next? From Bonnie. Who was the most shocking person to tell you they were a fan of your work? Oh, um, the one that you sent us, the, that, uh, oh, Jamie Lee Curtis is a fan of Invader Zim. Yeah, that's yeah that, was, that was interesting. She wrote, she wrote on Twitter, Invader Zim, yo, that's all she wrote. We're like, what did mean? Is she yelling at him? Is she mad at him? What happened? <laughs> and then, uh, I was on an airplane once and, um, the drummer for. Oh, yes. Wyatt. Uh, t uh, told me that he was uh, a big fan, so that was great. Because I got I know what we're getting like, high school. Uh, Robin Williams, his daughter. Oh yeah, Williams. Yeah, that was the biggest one. Yes, my wife Kristen just reminded me of that. <laughs> she said, "No, yeah, Robin Williams uh, apparently uh, likes the Mater Zim." So, so that nice. she and she wrote to Jonan about it a long time ago uh, about how she and her dad used to watch the show all the time. So I thought that was sweet. And they would play. She yeah. would be her and he would be Zim. Yeah. I thought that yeah. was very sweet. That's very sweet. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, no, it's Quiet Riot, huh? Quiet, Quiet Riot. Yeah, the drummer for Quiet Riot told me that. Wait, he, do you know which one? Because they've been through at least three. Oh, I don't know which one. I, I never, all I remember from Quiet Riot in high school is fists not belonging to the band members, but to their fans. Girls, rock your boys. <laughs> Come on, I uh, in high school, I was a new wave, you know, uh, flock of seagulls, uh, new, new romantic, and later goth kind of guy. The heavy metal did not enter into the sphere of except beatings. <laughs> As a former metalhead, uh, I apologize for the metalhead uh, Community. population. Community, yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, Community beating. I, I, for whatever it's worth. We good. <laughs> hey, I was a classic Duran Duran fan when I was wearing my Iron Maiden shirt. So I, feel, I feel your pain. Saw the concert. I can't listen to more than one Duran Duran. This is true. I can't listen to more than one Duran Duran song without getting a headache. Which one? Any of them. Any of them. If I'd listen to two in a row, I get a headache. Her name is Rio, and she dances on the sand. No, it has to be Girls on film. It has to be specifically Simon yes. LeBon singing, and then Sorry. I just get a migraine. I don't know what he's doing, what frequency he's hitting, but it's like a dog whistle. I'm the same way with Celine Dion. Oh yeah, I get. I can't it's handle. It. No, I go. No, oh, I don't know what it is. I, don't know. Uh, I have a friend that can't listen to any music that starts with a B minor. That's the mm. start in B minor. Like she, she cannot stand a uh, Hotel California. Oh, her I like the Eagles. <laughs> any B minor, can't watch it. <laughs> you don't like the Eagles. I don't like the Eagles. <laughs> you don't like the Eagles. I love the Eagles. I like the Eagles. Cool. Uh, so right. but when they start singing in bands, no. In, in on a dark desert highway. Get off that. Just get a drive off it. Get on the railroad and find some light. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> uh, body, thank you. <laughs> that, that meme where, where I've been through the desert on a horse with their name. Why don't you just name the horse? That, that woman yeah. who put that meme out on Twitter was so good. Why don't you just name the horse? <laughs> <laughs> That that wasn't that wasn't them. That was uh, who that was, was America. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy, thank you. That took us out of fun rabbit hole. But dude, what do we have next? From Veronica, what was the funniest moment you've had uh, on set with Invader Zim? Now, set being a very loose term, but at any stage of production. I think the most common story that Ricky and I have told over the years was that it occurred to me one day when I was in the booth that if Yoda was the most powerful Jedi master, and don't even get me started with the new Star Wars, I'm sorry for all the Star Wars fans out there, when 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 Kylo, 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 Kylo Ren can just reach across the galaxy and rip her necklace off, all right, we're not talking the force anymore. Anyway, I digress. Um, is it occurred to me in the booth one day in the middle of recording, I said to Ricky, Ricky, how come Yoda knows everything except who the uh, the uh, emperor is? He's right there in the Senate. He's like, All he has to do is lower his hood. He's like, oh, yeah. where'd he go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm, cloudy. Everything is cloudy. And so I went on this rampage. It's like, it's like Ricky would go, do you know where, like, we'll show you already. Well, where, uh, Yoda, Master Yoda, do you know where my car keys are? Cloudy. Uh, oh, uh, we were thinking of getting a pizza. Do you, you want to Do you, uh, you cloudy. know, uh, I parked cloudy. my car. And... Everything was cloudy. <laughs> and so I could not stop saying cloudy. And we would, we were taking a lunch break. Yeah. And so Jonan, Ricky and I got in the in Jonan's car. Jonan was driving. Ricky's in the front seat. I'm in the back. We're going to have Korean barbecue. And I could not stop laughing. It's going cloudy. And Ricky's like, Jonan slams on the brakes in the middle of traffic. Goes, if you don't stop that cloudy, I will turn this car around. And then when the start, car started going, Rich started doing it again. So then he took a seatbelt off and we drove into a wall. <laughs> and everything got cloudy. <laughs> and brought it around. Hey, 
Veronica, thank you for that. And uh, to our audience, if you'd like to chat with our guests like I am today or get a personalized autograph photo, please sign up over at galaxycon.com. And we've got time for a few more. So Jude, roll another one. This comes from Crimson. What would it sound like if you guys switched characters? Oh. Yeah, well, how would you do Gur? I am Gur! <laughs> Uh, I would do Zim like this. That's pretty much all I do anyway, so that's pretty accurate. <laughs> uh, well, Crimson, you got the answer. Made out of what you wanted, but to a <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, here's one for Ronnie. Ah, have either of you read the comics? And if so, what maybe your favorite issue or story that you read from? I like issue number 40, which is the one that I helped write. That's my favorite too. <laughs> also, the uh, issue zero, uh, I helped write that one too. I like and that one too. Five issues, which I helped color. I like that one too. I haven't seen them. I haven't either, but I like <laughs> I them too. what they look like. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ronnie. What's next? From Yuki. Uh, there were a lot of unaired episodes of Vader Zim. Is there a specific episode you wish was made? There wasn't a lot of unaired episodes. There were a lot of yeah. unrecorded. Recorded. I mean, they were un unanimated. And there weren't yeah. that many. There were a few recorded episodes that we didn't animate. But they weren't unaired. Um, yeah. And uh, there's a specific episode you wish it was made. Yeah, Ricky was writing an episode. So, Ricky, you can take that. made my episode. I was on the on on the day that we were canceled. I was right. I was I was just starting to work on it. I'd just been upgraded to writer, uh, uh, freelance on the show. I was working on an episode with Eric Trueheart, uh, uh, one of the, the main writers of the show, and we were writing an episode called uh, "Squishy Hugger of Worlds," and it was about a uh, giant galactus size alien that was coming to Earth, uh, not to eat it like Galactus does, but to hug it. Uh, he does. He flies from planet to planet, just hugging them. He loves planets so much. He just hugs them until they pop and explode. And so Zim finds out that this this uh, guy is heading towards the Earth. So he's like, go out and stop because this is his planet to destroy. Mm -hmm. Dib finds out, and so he gets in his ship and flies out too to save the Earth. But when they get out there, they find out that there's a, a flotilla of ships, an armada, an armada of spaceships following Squishy of all the planets that were already hugged to death by Squishy and their plan is to destroy the earth before he hugs it just to make him feel bad. <laughs> when we were working on that. Uh, we, we actually got into the first page. We're like typing away and they called us in for a meeting uh, and it was to cancel the show. So we just went back and we closed our laptops. <laughs> <laughs> I was at that meeting. Do you remember that the meeting? Yeah. <laughs> Robust. I would say. <clears throat> well, I I, I I do like that concept of of, of, of Galactus reimagined as I will hug the planet and kiss it and name it George, you know? Wishy hugger of worlds. Yes, I like that. Yuki, thank you. That was a good one. I think we have time for one more. So, Jason asks, uh, do you guys think there is any sort of overall message that Invader Zim provides to its viewers? <laughs> message? Um... There's no love. Uh, there's there's only despair, but it's at least it's funny. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think that you can laugh at anything, no matter how dark it can be. Um, so an overall Even message: if Planet Mars is crushing your soda can. You can laugh at that through the tears. Yeah, I don't. You know, I don't think there was ever an intention to have an overall me message. To be honest, yeah. just it's stuff that made us laugh. And we just thought it was funny and we amused ourselves. And, you know, I just think that every now and then you get a group together that has a chemistry that really gelled. And I think our cast gelled, our writers and the cast and Jonan and the directors. I just thought it was a really well assembled group of people in our, you know, in our, in our heyday and our prime and wanting to do the best and have and laugh the most. And that's all that's important to me. I know that something is good and fun when we're laughing and we make each other laugh. Yeah. My overall message is we hope we entertained you and it made you laugh and it helped. I know that it pulls a lot of people out of, you know, depression and dark times. So we're happy that we, we could, we could contribute to that 
in that kind of joy. You could laugh through the tears. Absolutely, absolutely. Jace, thank you for that. I think we have time for one more quick one, so I'll ask you to roll out our final question of the session. And this comes from Steven Vader. If you could pitch your own Invader Zim episode, what would it be about? I have this idea. I just, I just have this idea about this guy. It's this this, this alien that hugs hugs planets. Oh yeah, he loves them so much that he crushes really? them. But he can't help it because he loves them. I would call it something like "Pishy Squisher of Worlds." Ooh, that's a good title. I like that one a lot. Yeah. Good one. Quiet, 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 Ricky, quiet. Richard, tell us yeah. more about this yeah, brilliant idea. Brilliant idea. I've thought about it for a long time. Uh, I know that some people have tried to abscond with it, Eric Trueheart being one of them and Ricky, but yeah. I remember um, it being a thing. I'm, I'm sorry, what, Ricky? Who are they? I will find them and beat them to death for you. <laughs> they were you and Eric. Oh. Look at this guy. He's just sitting here next to me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no. I don't think I have an idea to pitch. I just like being told the stories that Joan and imagine in his head because I think it's yeah. so. It's, it's such a great place. Is that oh. your little Santa Bear, Ricky? The Santa Heathcliff. Santa Heathcliff. Yeah. Oh, it's ah. Heathcliff. I didn't yeah. realize. It. I'm surrounded by toys. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, Steve Invader, thank you for that. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been the cast of Invader Zim, and that was my time, but it absolutely does not have to be yours. If you'd like to chat with our guests like I have today or get a personalized autograph picture, please head over to GalaxyCon.com, and while you're there, be sure to check out our schedule of upcoming events like this one. Gentlemen, any final words before we go? Oh, yeah. Uh, go ahead, don't Ricky. Eat, don't eat glue. Um... That's if you if if during this crazy time of pandemic and you know staying at home you want a daily laugh, please follow me at uh, or actually yeah I guess it's follow me on Instagram at some kinda k i n d a joke some kind of joke or um, subscribe to uh, our YouTube channel uh, on uh, some kind of joke. I know it's confusing. Mm -hmm. But it's what it makes it funny. But we do a daily, we do a daily thing. We film it. It's fun. And uh, Psychonauts Two is coming out uh, soon. And uh, Destroy All Humans: The Reboot is currently out. So that's what and I besides, got. Besides not eating glue, also I do a D and D game uh, with my friend Eric Trueheart from Invader Zim, writer from Invader Zim. It's called One Man Murder Maze. If you go to my uh, my Twitter feed, uh, Ricky Simons on Twitter. There's a link at the top that uh, goes to One Man Murder Maze along with my uh, my other podcast called Absinthian Kingdom, which is a story that I write and do all the characters of and the music in and all that sort of stuff. And I think you should go to both of them and uh, listen to them and enjoy them. Absolutely. As I have enjoyed uh, hosting you gentlemen today, again, miss seeing you guys live and in person, but uh, someday we will get back to that. In the meantime, it has been a delight to have you here at the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you to our audience who joined us today. Thank you for sending in those great questions. Hope to see you again later on today for Team Juniper and tomorrow, Sunday the 8th, for an all Klingon actor Star Trek panel. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care, and please keep washing those hands.